Hi and welcome to Essential Lightroom. In this week's tutorial I'm going to take you through and show you how you can recreate this desaturated matte effect. I'm also going to take you through and show you how you can create a black and white version of this. As always, you'll have a free preset you can download, the link is in the description below so you can get one click and get the effect. But stick around, watch the video because there's some extra stages at the end that'll show you how to tweak your specific images. So let's take a look at how we can do all of that right now. So here's our starting point and as you can see it's already quite an interesting image. So let's go through step by step and develop this image to get exactly where we want to get that matte desaturated effect. So in the develop module we're going to come to the basics panel and we're not really going to do too much in here. It's a pretty straightforward effect. So the first thing I want to do is just push the exposure by about a half a stop for this particular image. Just to brighten it up a little bit. That should do. And then I want to take the contrast and we're going to give that a good boost. Probably about plus 50 around that kind of ballpark, just to get some real sort of contrast in there. Next up, we're going to move on down to the shadows, and we're going to open those up a little bit. So we're going to boost those up by about plus 20, 25, somewhere in that region. That should be a good starting point. That should do. Then we're going to come down, and we're going to take the saturation, the clarity, and the vibrance. We're going to control those under the present section. So we're going to take the clarity, take that up. About 20, 25 on there as well. We're going to push the vibrance because that's going to allow us to tweak the warmer colors in the image. So let's just push those up a little bit. About plus 20, somewhere around that region. The reason we're doing this is because when we desaturate, we want certain colors to stand out and be a little stronger while other colors are muted down. So with the saturation, we're going to do the opposite. We're going to drop that down to about minus 55. And you'll see that we now strip out most of the color in there. We just retain some of the warmer colors, the blues. So we've got exactly what we want. We can tweak this on an image by image basis as well. So this is just a ballpark starting point. Now the most important setting that we've got for creating this matte effect is by using the tone curve. We need to make sure we're in the linear mode. So as always, just click on the little symbol in the corner to switch between the two different modes. When we're in linear point curve mode, we can now adjust the actual curve itself and influence the image directly using this curve. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pin probably about this point. We're going to pin that point. So anything above there is not going to be affected too much. It's a small amount of curve in there. But we're going to take the shadows, the dark areas in the image, and we're going to push those right up. We're going to sort of take those and we're going to flatten them down. And you'll see we start to create that curve effect. So we've now locked that in position. We create a curve moving up. And you can see now, if you look at the shadow areas, the darker areas and the jeans, the black on the camera and the shadows in the hair, they now become much flatter. So it creates that sort of matte effect, that sort of old film effect. So if I turn that off, there's before. You can see everything is looking quite normal, even if it's des desaturated. Switch it back on. We darken the image down, but we also flatten out the shadow area. So that's the key to working with these matte effects. Next up, I want to tweak some of the colors in this. I want to bring the blue down and I want to push the skin tones ever so slightly. Now this is again on an image by image basis. So we're going to come to the HSL slider, choose saturation, and I'm going to choose the direct selection. So I can just click on the little symbol and I can now go onto my image and I can adjust it directly without using the sliders myself. So I'm going to come to the blue in the sort of the nice blue area in the, the sky. I'm going to drag down while holding the left mouse button down and you see that the blue slider starts to reduce and a small amount of purple that's in there. So that's desaturated the sky a little more. Now I want to push the skin tones to get those a little bit warmer. So I'm going to do the same, but I'm going to push up with the mouse. And you see the skin tones now start to get a little warmer. I don't want to go crazy with this. I just want to bring that nice contrast between the slightly desaturated blue in the sky and just bring back some warmth in the skin tone that we've lost from desaturating the overall image. So if we take a look at the sliders, you can see the orange and the yellows have been boosted, which is the skin tones, and we pulled down the sky by using the blue and a slight amount of purple. So that's looking pretty good. Again, let's do it before and after. So there's where we were before, there's after. So it now brings back, like I say, a little bit more warmth in those, those skin tones. So now that I've finished making those color alterations to the skin tones, the next thing I want to do is come down to the effects section. And in there, we're going to add some grain to the image, and we're going to add a vignette. So let's start off with a vignette. Let's pull that down just to darken those edges. We're going to boost the highlights. We've got the sun coming in, in the top corner. I want to sort of have that as if it's being affecting the vignette itself. So what I can do is I can push the highlights, and you'll see that when we do that, the 
sort of darker areas in the top left, uh, top right hand corner will start to reduce slightly. There we go. It's quite subtle, but it is there. So that's just before and after. So there we go. There's that. And the next thing I want to do is just zoom in a little bit so we can see what kind of grain we're putting in there. So let's push the grain up and let's adjust the roughness to get it looking slightly more natural. And we can adjust the size to get it exactly where we want. Let's go for the sort of chunkier grain. I don't want to go crazy with this. I'll put that around about 15 mark. Yeah, that's looking pretty good. Okay, so we've now added the grain in there. We've put the vignette into it. You can tweak the dehaze if you want to slightly. You can see if we pull that back a little bit, it sort of fades the image out a little bit more. Entirely up to you. Again, this is the kind of thing that's totally to taste. You may find you want to push it a little bit to actually boost it. That's quite a, a nice effect. But I'm going to drop it down ever so slightly. About minus five. So we're around there. That's looking good. So that's before and after. Like you say, that just adds a little bit of character to the overall shot, makes it look a little bit more like it's been shot on a high ISO film. So that's all there is to creating this matte, desaturated effect. Like I say, we can take this one step further. If we want to create the same kind of thing in black and white, we can come over and we can switch into the black and white mode. That will create that flattened look. Now, I would say you're probably going to want to go and tweak a little bit more now because you're working with a black and white version. So I'd probably push the clarity Take the saturate uh, the uh, the contrast and boost that a little bit, just to get even more contrast in those edges. I may do the same thing then with the blacks, just to boost those a little. There we go. So let's darken those down a little bit, get a little more contrast in there, and pull the shadows back. With all these kind of things, they're all really hard to taste. And what I will probably do is come back down to the effects and we'll take the clarity, the amount of dehaze, I should say, and push that this time as opposed to reduce it. So there's the black and white effect. Again, it's a really nice effect. It gives a nice old school film camera kind of effect. Nice grain in there. Some really sort of uh, nice matte effect to the overall image. Well, I hope you found this video useful. If you did, please give it a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button to be kept up to date with all of the new content we add every single week. As always, the link to the free presets is in the description below. You can download those, one click, and you're going to get close to where we've gone in this video. Well, until next time, take care.